Ngayong araw nga pinaalam na ng spokesperson ni VP Sara Duterte na si attorney po ay nawala na siyang kahit anumang kaugnayan kay VP Sara ito nga ay matapos umano siyang tanggalan ng posisyon ng nasabing alkalde. Ngayon nga daw nawala na itong koneksyon kay VP Sara ay hindi daw nangangahulugan na ligtas na ito sa mga animal yang ginawa ni Sara Duterte. Handa naman daw patunayan ni attorney po ay nawala siyang alam sa mga ginagawang kasalanan ni VP Sara dahil taga sunod lang umano siya sa mga utos ng alkalde. Narito panuuri ng video kung paano ibinuking ni attorney po ang mga kasalanan ni Vice President. Siguro we can ask the former undersecretary or the spokesman of the Vice President, Attorney Poa, if uh, are you still connected with the well, I understand that you are no longer connected with DepEd, but how about in the office of the Vice President? Are you still connected? Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, I would like to inform the Honorable Committee that I am no longer connected po, uh, with the office of the Vice President. Hindi na po ako. Yung consultancy contract ko po was already pre-terminated, Your Honor. Not even as a spokesman? Wala na rin po ako as spokesperson. Okay, uh, but no po. are you aware of the status of the people who are subject of uh, the subpoena? No are they still connected? Uh, honestly, Your Honor, uh, when I was still there, yes, they were connected with the OVP. Although, as of today, hindi ko na po talaga masabi factually if they are still connected or not. I would assume because of the position paper with the letterhead that they're still connected. But I cannot confirm that because um, uh, nagpaalam po ako, ano pa po eh, uh, nagpaalam po ako na umalis uh, prior pa po to the previous hearing that we had. Mr. Honor. Chair, I assume yes, that, uh, uh, that Attorney Powa knows all of these people personally, di ba? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, oh, Your Honor. Oh. So therefore, siguro at present, alam mo pa rin kung sino yung connected kay Vice President? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, who, are, who are those people still connected with the Vice President? Your Honor, as far as, as, you know it. as, far as I know, uh, those people are still connected with the Vice President. Although as of today, I really... <laughs> do not uh, have uh, personal knowledge. But as far as I know, they are still connected with the OB. Uh, Mr. Thank Chair, you, how about uh, uh, Ms. Lopez? Is she still connected? As far as I know, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Gonzaga. Gonzaga? Yeah, Emmanuel Gonzaga Ortonio. Ah, uh, yes, Your Honor, I, as far as I know. How about Rosaline Ladores Sanchez? As far as I know, Your Honor. Uh, Gina Acosta. Um, as I don't have any interaction po with her, but uh, when I was there, yes, I, I know that she was connected with those. About uh, Julieta Villa del Rey? As far as I know, Your Honor. Edward Fajarda? Uh, yes, as far as I and know. And Sunshine, Sunshine Chari Fajarda? As far as I know as well, Your uh, Honor. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would, I would assume that if all of these are connected with the Vice President, it is the Vice President herself that asked them not to uh, attend this hearing. So may I know if uh, all these uh, subject uh, persons that were mentioned by the Honorable, Honorable Abante are still, uh, do you have any travel, any travel update? Uh, Your Honor. Um, are they still? Yes, Congressman. Mr. Chair, may I also? Mr. Chair. Congressman Sia. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. In line with the question of uh, Chairman Abante, well, I'd like also to ask Attorney Pao, because she mentioned a certain number of names, and you confirmed that they are still connected with the Office of the Vice President. Would you also know if uh, an individual by the name of uh, Kelvin Tuntinido and uh, Maria Edeline Rabago are still also connected with the Office of the Vice President? Uh, Attorney Pao, uh, please, please, sorry, please Mr. respond. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I am not familiar with them because when I was a uh, spokesperson, I only dealt with the uh, upper management. Although, yung Mr. Kelvin, I think I recall his name. Yeah. Uh, although I cannot 
uh, in all honesty, say if but he's while, still connected. When, or not. when the time that you were connected with the vice president, uh, you were you, have you met these people? Uh, briefly, Would you say that yeah? briefly, Your Honor, because of the budget hearings uh, okay. that time? Are they are they career of officers of OVP? I, I honestly wouldn't know, Your Honor. Okay, uh, kasi you. I was only a consultant, Your Honor, so I beg your indulgence on yeah. that. Okay, thank you, Attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Just Congressman Paduano. Uh, just for, to clarify things, uh, because we're discussing some other names mentioned by uh, members or colleagues no, and members of this committee, while we have received already the, the official position of from the office of the Vice President, and was signed by one, two, three, four, five, seven persons, subject of isupena artisticandom. Yes. So, so Mr. Chairman, ganito na lang po because uh, reading on the documents, no, that was uh, as reply and an excuse of from the office of the vice president signed by the seven persons uh, cited uh, issued by isupena. At Estificando, a certain <clears throat> Attorney Lopez, at Lemuel Ortonio, uh, Attorney Sanchez, Olieta Villaderle, uh, Gina Acosta, and the spouses, uh, Sunshine and Edward Farda. Now, Mr. Chairman, uh, while the while, uh, question of uh, being absent in the day's hearing, uh, was already uh, discussed and answered by this honorable committee, unless otherwise some of the members will discuss it once again with regards to question of subjudice, question of uh, uh, jurisdictional issue, and uh, the right to decline the invitation. But uh, one thing is important, Mr. Chairman, that they invoke the question of the 3D rule, which is our internal rules. So, Mr. Chairman, now to be safe, for this committee to be safe, uh, may I respectfully move na lang, Mr. Chairman, to once again issue suspena ad testificandum to all those mentioned name, no? To all those mentioned name and what's issued uh, previously a suspena ad testificandum to be present in the next hearing, Mr. Chairman. So move, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Deputy Speaker Suarez. Second. <laughs> well, actually, Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, before, uh, with Paduano. the indulgence of uh, the members and the good uh, chairman, Mr. Chairman, uh, to expedite discussion with regards to the uh, question, uh, matters at hand, may I just uh, respectfully submit, Mr. Chairman, my official position with regards to the position uh, or reply by the Office of the Vice President, just to expedite discussion, Mr. Chairman. Just for the record, Mr. Chairman, I will just submit my position with regards to subjudice, with regards to question of the trade rule, and uh, the, the four uh, reasons why those seven OBP officials are not present in this hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair. Okay. Yes, Congressman Abante. According to the committee secretary, these people At this have been invited four times, but they failed to attend. As I am, uh, I, you know, I, I'm so glad for the kindness of Congressman Paduano in inviting them again for the fifth time. Now, Mr. Chair, if they will not come for the fifth time, then I might make a motion to, to uh, hold them in contempt. Because this is the fourth time. Uh, this, is, this is unfair to these people here who have attended every time that they are called upon. And then, and then we're just going to s do nothing about these people here who have been invited four times. It's unfair, unfair for us too that we are here uh, in this hearing and these people are kept on insulting us, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. Congressman Paduano. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. With the manifestation made by, by the Honorable Vice Chair Abante with regards to the issuance of Suprema at the State Fecandum, uh, let's close the bridge. I think, Mr. Chairman, let's close the bridge when we have the next hearing. No? Tingnan po natin. But of course, uh, we will just uh, 
comply with our internal rules with regards to the trading rule. But question of due process with regards to invitation, Mr. Chairman, that is very clear that we have invited them, them for the four invitations. So I, I, I really joined the sentiment of Vice Chair Avante, but uh, as of now, we cannot uh, discuss about it since uh, we have to comply with our internal rule. It is uh, the trade rules, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yes, before I make uh, my ruling, um, I would just like to make a short manifestation. I uh, tot totally in agreement with the uh, manifestation of Congressman uh, Abante. And uh, in fact, the fact that uh, all the other resource persons are present in today's hearing, uh, bakit naman po sila naka-attend? Yung uh, iba eh hindi maka-attend. Um, but of course, for uh, para po mawala na lang po yung mga agam-agam and uh, also to uh, just like what uh, Congressman Paduano said to accommodate uh, and in view of our uh, three-day rule, we will just uh, reissue another subpoena with a stern warning that the next time that uh, they fail to attend, we will be constrained to issue a much uh, heavier uh, penalty. Um, considering that there is a motion which was duly seconded by Congressman uh, with Deputy Speaker Suarez, is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is carried. Mr. The Chairman. Yes, uh, Deputy Speaker Suarez. Yeah, I just want to make a quick manifestation. Um, Unang-una ho ay pinapangalawahan ko po yung posisyon ni Congressman Abante patungkol po sa mga taong iniimbitahan ng kumiting ito upang magbigay ng uh, impormasyon, pagpapaliwanag sa mga usapin na pinag-uusapan natin. Kung hindi po ako nagkakamali, Mr. Chairman, pang-apat na hearing na po natin ito. Tama po ba ako? Yes. This is our fourth hearing. Um, I'm sure... Uh, a great number of the Filipino people know what we're talking about. I'm sure the Office of the Vice President know what we're talking about. I'm sure the officials of the DepEd know what we're talking about. And being public servants, whether you're elected or you're appointed, it is part of your duty to make sure that you exercise transparency and accountability in the exercise of your duties and functions. Now, as an appointed official, having that um, oath that you have taken, pag meron po mga patawag na ginagawa, ang Kongreso, maging ang Senado at ang mababang kapulungan, obligado pong umaten sila dahil napakahalaga po ng kanilang ibabahagi sa ating mga pinag-uusapan. So, alam ko naman po ay nakikinig, Yung mga iniimbitahan natin na ayaw sumipot, pakiusap ko lang po sa kanila para naman matapos na po ito at uh, makapagpatuloy na po tayo sa ilang bahagi. Ang habo lang naman po natin dito ay katotohanan, pagpapaliwanag lang kung paano ba ginastos yung pera. Hindi naman siguro masyadong mahirap ipaliwanag kung tama naman po ang paggastos ng pera. So... Sinususugan ko po yung posisyon ni Congressman Paduano na pagbigyan natin muli ng, sige, isa pa. Isa pang pakiusap. Tulad na lang ng ginawa natin ng budget hearing, pinag, pin, pinagbigyan na naman natin ng isa pang pagkakataon para humarap sa plenary. Kasi lang sana naman po, ito na ang huling pagkakataon na ibibigay natin. Dahil mahalaga po ang oras natin, Mahalaga po yung oras ng mga taong pumupunta dito. Ako po ay nakikiisa sa pasasalamat sa inyong lahat. Dahil alam ko naman po ay inaabot po tayo minsan dito ng walo, sampung oras, sa uh, pandinig. But you give time. You open up your schedule because you know the importance and the significance of these hearings. So again, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to manifest that that I am very disappointed with the position of our invited guests for, again, for the fourth time, not attending our hearing. 
And I do hope that when we do issue the subpoena tomorrow, um, we can take our proper action. Now, my question, Mr. Chair, is what other uh, legal remedy does the committee possess uh, in so far as to secure, um, number one, if our resource persons are still in the Philippines? Number two, to avoid flight? Uh, number three, to ensure that their presence will be here in the following hearing. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chair. Yes, Congressman Abante. Uh, in relation to uh, the question of uh, my good friend, Congressman J.J. Suarez, nakalagay po dito sa pinadala sa atin na uh, information that uh, only Zuleika Lopez departed on November 4. Emmanuel Gonzaga Ortonio arrived November 20. Rosalind Ladores Sanchez arrived May 21. Uh, Juliet Villa del Rey arrived October 5. Edward Fajarda and Sanshan Chari Fajarda arrived June 25. Now, wala pa naman po nang naka-report na umalis, umalis sila uli. Sa palagay ko po, uh, Hindi lang talaga, I just would like to manifest, Mr. Chair, na napakabait po ng Committee on Good Government for giving them the chance for the fifth time to attend. Sana naman po ay hindi na kami ipahiya dito sapagkat uh, para bang nararamdaman ko na umiiwas sila na tanungin kung paano ginamit ang pondo ng ating pamahalahan na dapat nilang linawin sa committee ito sapagkat tayo po ang binigyan ng mandato ng konstitusyon upang ating busisiin ang pondo na ginagamit ng bawat ayansya ng gobyerno, Mr. Chair. Kaya sa akin po, ah, nakaka-disappoint sapagkat ah, dapat ipaliwanag, hindi lamang sa ating komite, dapat ipaliwanag sa taong bayan kung paano ba ginamit ang pondo ng taong bayan, Mr. Chair. Marami salamat. Uh, Mr. Maybe Chair. we can... Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, Congressman Sia. Just like to inquire, since we are on the subject of uh, issuing subpoena at this, at this testificandum to certain individuals, may also inquire from our ComSec, have we also s sent invitation uh, to Mr. Kelvin Jerome Tenido and Maria Edelin Rabago? These are, I believe, uh, career officers in the office of the Vice President. Have we sent them invitation in the previous committee hearings? Your Honors, in the previous committee hearings, Mr. Kelvin L. Tinido was, uh, Jerome Tinido was invited. Ms. Rabago was uh, first time invitee, okay. Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, may I proceed with recognizing some members first, Your Honor? Yes, please, thank okay. you. Honorable Franz Pumar Espumarian, Deputy Majority Leader from the 3rd District of Quezon City, is present, Your Honor, as well as Honorable Ed Christopher Esgo, Deputy Majority Leader, 2nd District of Isabela, Your Honor. Yeah, so how many times did the... Uh refused to appear before this committee hearings. For Mr. Kelvin Jerome Tenido, Your Honor, this is the second time. For Ms. Rabago, this is the first time, Your Honor. Okay. So, Chair, I'd like to, request, I'd like to ask, uh, Mr. Chair, how many times uh, would the committee allow for certain invitees not to appear in the committee be uh, hearings before we can issue a uh, subpoena for them to be mandated and obligated to appear before this committee hearings? Your Honor, under the rules on inquiries, uh, witnesses, resource persons, and guests are allowed to unjustified absences, Your Honor. Have they sent us uh, justification or a reason for their uh, not, attend not attending in the previous committee hearing? Did we receive any letter, excuse letter from them? No excuse letters, Your Honor, only position papers refusing to attend, Your Honor, based on the uh, points raised in the current position paper that we have. It has been reiterated from day one of the other members or of officials of the Office of the Vice President, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Comsec. I'd mean, uh, like to reiterate again the manifestation of uh, Deputy Speaker J.J. Suarez that we have been very lenient to these individuals. So if we have not received any uh, justification of excuse letter for them not to attend before this committee and I believe these individuals that I've mentioned have already been received 
uh, invitation in the previous committee hearings, perhaps we can also, uh, well, I would suggest to the committee that we can also include them, issue them a subpoena at testificandum so that they may be required to appear before this committee hearings because I believe this, uh, their testimonies would be um, material uh, for this committee to arrive in a sound judgment once we file our resolution, once we file our committee report, uh, para po maintindihan natin ng buo, comprehensively understand kung ano po yung pinag-uusapan natin dito. So, Mr. Chair, um, again, I would submit to the committee, to the chair, whether or not these individuals would also be included in the subpoena testificate that we will be issuing in uh, probably tomorrow, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Chair. Yes. That's, uh, but, but if not, uh, if, I, I, again, uh, I would uh, uh, subscribe to the decision of this committee, to the, uh, to the chairman, since being that they have already, res they have already refused to attend. Uh, this is the second time, no? Or the third time na, no? Comsec? The second time. Chairman. Is there any is there any motion? Well, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, if uh, if given the no no, I would I would move that the, these uh, individuals be included in the subpoena that we will be issuing, Mr. Chair. This committee will be. Issuing. Is there any second to the motion? Second. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is carried. Uh, Mr. Chair. Sec, please Thank include much, the Chair. names Kelvin Tenido and A. Delin Rabago to the subpoena at testificandum. Noted, Your Honors. May I please continue with the update for the resource persons, Your Honor? Yes, please. Uh, include, could you please also update this committee if uh, the lookout bulletin that we requested to the Bureau of, uh, to the DOJ um, has already been released? Uh, yes, Your Honors. Uh, in coordination with the Bureau of Immigration, who were invited today, Your Honor, however, they are unable to attend. Nevertheless, they sent to us the latest travel records of the personal subject of the subpoena at Testificano, which has been distributed to Your Honors. Uh, as to the ILB or Immigration Lookout Bulletin Order, I was updated by Attorney Vicente Uncad of the Bureau of Immigration that they have not yet received an ILBO. However, it, uh, per, per news reports, uh, the request is already with the SOJ and um, are, is awaiting for his signature, Your Honor. Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Congressman Abante. Perhaps it would also be better for us to invite Attorney Vicente Uncat to uh, uh, give us the information about these uh, people that we have invited you know, on their travels, uh, Mr. Chair. Please take note of the manifestation of uh, Congressman Ongkad Komsek. Noted, Your Honors. Um, attorney, actually, it was actually Attorney Vicente Ongkad who signed the the information, the travel records, Your Honor, in your hand. However, he's in, he is engaged right now. That's why, in an equally important matter, nevertheless, he sent this uh, document, Your Honor, and he will be invited again in the next hearing, Your Honor. Lahat po ba itong uh, subject ng ating sabina ay nasa Pilipinas pa o meron ano yung mga travel record nila? Uh, Your Honor, per coordination or in coordination with Attorney Ongkad, uh, all the seven in, uh, we, of which we, of whom we have requested travel records, only one left the country last night per information received. Uh, Attorney Zulay T. Lopez uh, entered the immigration gates of uh, the airport last night at 7.31 p.m. Uh, aboard flight PR-102, Manila to Los Angeles. Uh, but the rest are still in the Philippines. However, for Ms. Gina F. Acosta, considering that she has many multiple namesakes, the Bureau of Immigration is unable to provide information as to her latest travel records, Your Honor. Congressman Abante. Uh, what, what do you mean multiple namesakes? Ibig sabihin si Gina Acosta has a lot of aliases uh, given? Uh, Your Honor, she may have had many uh, kaparehong pangalan, Your Honor. Gina ah, F. Acosta, yes. Pangalan. Pangalan. Oh. Hence, the Bureau of Immigration requested for uh, birthplace or any other distinguishing detail to uh, be provided in order to uh, obtain specific records for Ms. Gina F. Acosta of the OVP. M Mr. Chair, uh, Mukhang maraming pera to mga to dahil nagda-travel palagi. You know? 
Kaya ta, uulitin ko po, ha? uulitin ko sa chair. Sapagkat eh, uh, medyo, medyo, alam nyo, uh, hindi rin nakakatuwa na makita na apat na beses nang inimbitahan to. Samantala nakalagay sa rules natin. Dalawang beses lang eh. And then afterwards, you could be able to uh, issue a contempt order. No? Pero ito ha, uh, pang-apat na kayong hindi naka-attend, pang-lima ng imbitasyon to. So nakikita nyo ang uh, kabaitan ng uh, Committee on Good Government na pinapangunahan ni Congressman Joel Chua. So nais kong sabihin ulit, uh, itong si Suleika Lopez, Emmanuel Gonzaga Ortonio, Rosalyn Ladores Sanchez, Gina Acosta, Julieta Bilda del Rey, Edward Fajarda, Sunshine Chari Fajarda. Huwag nyo naman kami nga hamunin ano ho, ang kumiting ito na mag-issue na kami ng contempt order sa inyo. Sana mag na kayo ngayon pong inibitahan kayo ng panglimang beses. Tapagkat alam ko naman, Mr. Chair, nakikinig itong mga taong ito eh. Hindi naman sila ignorante sa hearing na ito. Nakikinig po sila dito. At kung narinig niyo po kami, nananawagan po kami sa inyo. Ha? Eh mag na kayo sa next hearing po natin. At inyo na tanggapin ang uh, aming uh, pagiging mabait sa inyo so far, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. may Chair. I be recognized? Congressman Al Alon. Alonto. Yeah, Mr. Chair, just a, just a quick manifestation as well, just to re-echo the sentiment of our colleagues here, Chairman Abante. Mr. Chair, uh, I noticed also the, the position paper that was sent to us by these resource persons that we have invited, that they have cited the Kalida versus uh, Trillianes case as ruled by the Supreme Court. Mr. Chair, uh, we, we, there's no, no, no portion in that ruling of the Supreme Court where it says that uh, the invitation of a certain individual may not appear in the committee proceedings. It merely parts there in the, in the ruling, Mr. Chair, in that particular ruling by the Supreme Court, in part there that the Congress must, again, be conscious of the, about the rights of the invited persons. Hindi ko nang sinasabi doon na may right na hindi pumunta. Wala pong doon sa ruling na yon, kasi yung pong in-invoke nila na ruling na yon sa kanilang response that sa ating committee, na wala pong sinasabi doon sa ruling na yun na wag silang pumunta. In fact, ang sinasabi lang po doon ay uh, uh, nire-remind at sinasabi sa Congress na maging conscious tayo sa rights ng mga invited persons. In fact, Mr. Chair, refusal to attend a committee hearing, Mr. Chair, constitute a violation under the revised penal code doon po sa Article 150 na ang penalty nito ay arresto mayor. In fact, we are being given and recognized uh, by the Supreme Court that we have the mandate uh, to as part of our oversight functions to really invite these persons and know exactly what you know the issues at hand yung expenditure ng public expenses so i think alam nila yan kasi they have invoked this uh, ruling by the supreme court and they have cite, cited this uh, ruling i'm sure they have also consulted the lawyers uh, kung if they keep on refusing attending these committee hearings alam po na alam po ng mga abogado nila yan na in fact it's a uh, under po dun sa revised uh, penal code article number 150, talagang meron pong penalty dyan sa refusal dun sa mga invitation ng mga proper na binigyan ng mandato ng constitution na mag-investigate at mag-inquire at mag-hold ng mga uh, committee hearings such as what we're doing right now. So just to uh, add context to the manifestation of Congressman uh, Chairman Benny Abante po, na dapat po alam po nila yan because they have to consult their lawyers and they must appear before this committee hearing, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Mr. Chair. Yes, Congressman Manuel, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, in connection din doon, dahil uh, more than one time sinight sa position paper ng mga official ng Office of the Vice President yung Kalida versus Trillanes noong 2019, Mr. Chair, it is very disappointing for public officials representing the second highest office sa bansa natin na chine-cherry pick ang mga desisyon ng Supreme Court. Mr. Chair, uh, in addition sa nabanggit ng kolig natin, kaya naman tayo umabot sa, sa pina 
ad testificandum at hindi na lamang simpleng imbitasyon kasi yung mga input na gusto nating makuha mula sa mga opisyal na napangalanan ay crucial na mga impormasyon at hindi na lamang optional or add-on na mga impormasyon in line with the topics of our investigation or inquiry. Tsaka Mr. Chair, hindi nila sinight na actually yung petition uh, nung nag-file versus kung sino yung dapat sumagot. Mr. Chair, this uh, Supreme Court petition was actually dismissed. Ibig sabihin, nag-favor uh, yung Supreme Court doon sa kapangyarihan ng legislative bodies na mag-conduct talaga ng mga investigations in line with the legislation. Lalo na yung national budget ay isa yan oh, sa pinaka pinagdedebatihan talaga ng mga batas dito sa ating bansa. And uh, Mr. Chair, sa position paper kasi ang dami talagang palusot eh, pero hindi pa maayos yung mga palusot na binibigay. At actually, lalo lang na ina-undermine at hindi nire-respeto yung trabaho ng mga mambabatas kina question na hindi ito in idol legislation, wala daw jurisdiction yung committee, nasa Supreme Court na daw. Pero then again, maging yung Supreme Court, kinikilala nga yung ating responsibilidad. Kasi we owe it to the people na talakayin yung ganito mga topic, lalo na at pera ng bayan nyo nakataya. And uh, also, Mr. Chair, yung dinahilan din kasi daw natanggap yung letter uh, holiday, tapos may weekend pa, kaya late daw nabasa. Mr. Chair, uh, we would like to remind these officials na dahil mga public official tayo, hindi dapat basta-basta ginagamit yung holiday or weekend bilang dahilan para ineglect yung ating duty. Kasi tayo, we have a standard, sapat yung minimum three calendar days for us to issue notices. Pag, kapag magkakahiring tayo. So, yun lang gusto nating uh, reiterate din, Mr. Chair, in support din sa mga nabanggit. Dahil uh, sobra na itong, uh, actually, uh, nasa extent pa rin po ng pagbabastos na sa mandato ng committee natin to conduct this investigation. Yun lang, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Congressman Nabante. Uh, tayo po yung nagpapasalamat kay Atty. Powa na yung ating ating pag sa kanya, eh, palagi siya nandi rito, no? Uh, the fact that he, he worked as a spokesman of the Vice President before. Gusto ko nang tanongin sa kanya, kilala niya yung mga taon to, eh. Ito ba talaga mga ugali nito mga taon to? Palagay mo, Tony Chua, ito ba talaga ugali ng mga taong ito? Mr. Chair. Yes. Your Honor, I'm... Attorney Powa, you recognize. I hope you would uh, forgive me, but I cannot comment po on that, no? Uh, but... I'm sorry, Paul. Well, I'm just so glad, Mr. Chair, that Attorney Powa uh, do not have this kind of an attitude also. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Congressman Chair. Luis Toro. Mr. Chair, to complete the arguments, our answer to the arguments which were raised by the OVP in their position paper, I wish to share the, the rules and the jurisprudence which were cited with respect to the argument on subjudice rule, isa po sa mga dahilan na ginagamit ng OVP why they refuse to attend our inquiry in aid of legislation is the rule on subjudice. By this, we are prevented from making any comment or disclosures pertaining to judicial proceeding which may directly or indirectly impede, obstruct, or degrade the administration of justice. In Filipino, Mr. Chair, kapag ang subject matter is already pending in court, generally, we are precluded from making any comment. However, Mr. Chair, maliwanag po ang parameters when the subjudice rule may apply. And I wish to share number one, under Section 1 of the Rules on Inquiry in Aid of Legislation, the filing or pendency of a case before any court, tribunal, or quasi-judicial or administrative body shall not stop or abate any inquiry conducted to carry out a legislative process. Number two, Mr. Chair, there is no pending court case or administrative appeal that involves the same subject matter of this hearing. I understand that there are pending petitions before the Supreme Court, but let us acknowledge that the subject matter of those petitions 
is the constitutionality of the grant of confidential fund to executive offices like the OVP and the DepEd. Whereas the subject matter of this investigation, Mr. Chair, is the utilization of the confidential fund. These are two different matters, Mr. Chair. And third, Mr. Chair, let us be aware of the jurisprudence on the case of Romero II versus Estrada. This is GR number 174-105, promulgated on April 2, 2009, which essentially states ongoing judicial proceedings cannot preclude or hinder congressional hearings in aid of legislation. In this case, it was held that the mere filing of a criminal or an administrative complaint before a court should not automatically bar the conduct of legislative investigation. Otherwise, Mr. Chair, it would be extremely easy to subvert any intended inquiry by Congress through the convenient ploy of instituting a criminal or an administrative complaint. Surely, the exercise of sovereign legislative authority of which the power of legislative inquiry is an essential component cannot be made subordinate to a criminal or administrative investigation. In conclusion, Mr. Chair, there is no leg to stand on where the OVP can raise the rule on subjudice. I submit, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congresswoman Luistro. Mayroon pa pong gusto mag-comment? Yes, uh, Congress, Congressman Defensor, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to put to rest once and for all, the issue of whether this is in aid of legislation. This is clearly in aid of legislation because ang pera na ginamit ng OVP at ng DepEd is funded and forms part of the single most important legislation passed by Congress every year and that is the annual budget or the General Appropriations Act. Walang pwedeng magsabi na ang pondo na binibigay sa mga ensya ng gobyerno kapag iniimbestigihan ng committing ito is not part of, legis of in aid of legislation because we legislate the funds that we give to all agencies and instrumentalities, instrumentalities of government. And it, it, it is us... It is for us to determine through our oversight and this committee whether we will fund it again, whether we will repeal it, or whether we will not no longer fund these programs through these confidential and intelligence funds. So I hope that is clear to every Filipino na in aid of legislation ito kasi part ito ng annual budget or general appropriations act. Taon, taon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman Abante. I fully agree with Congresswoman Luis Tro and Congressman Defensor on what they said. You know. eh, ito po ay pinapanood ng taong bayan na kinakailangan maunawaan po nila na itong pondong ito, whether confidential po ito o hindi, eh nagastos na po ito. Hindi pa ito gagastusin. Nagastos na po ito eh ang nais nating malaman kung paano ito nagastos. Tungkulin po natin yan sa kumiting ito na alamin upang malaman po ng taong bayan na yung paggastos po ng pondo na nanggaling sa mga taxpayers ay tama at naayon sa mandato na ibinigay sa office ng pangalawang pangulo. Kaya nga po iniimbitahan natin itong mga taong ito na nakakaalam na mga pondong ito. Ako naman po eh medyo naaawa na rin sa ating uh, members ng COE eh, na naririndi na sa mga katanungan natin. Eh talagang dapat eh pumunta na po ito. Kaya gusto ko rin i-air ang warning na ito muli. Ha? Pag hindi pa sila nagpunta sa pang, pang limang pagkakataon eh ako na po eh magmamotion to uh, to uh, issue a contempt order on them. Maraming maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Your Thank Honor. you, Your Honor. Abante. 
May I be recognized? Yes, Comsec, you're Your, recognized. Thank you, Your Honor. We recognize the presence of Honorable Ernesto M. Jonicio Jr., member, 1st District of the City of Manila, as well as Honorable Jonathan Keith T. Flores, 2nd District of Bukidnon. Your Honor, present as well today are representatives from the Land Bank of the Philippines, AVP Nanita Camposano of the DOTC branch. Ma'am, may you please raise your hand? Present, Your Honor. DM Joyce L. Eclavea, DepEd branch. And Attorney Rafael Christopher L. Yap, Special Legal Concerns Department. Present, Your Honor. Nakapag-take na po ba sila ng oath? No, Your Honor. They are, they are new invitees, Your Honor. Yes. Pwede po bang paki-administer yung oath, Comsec? Uh, from the representatives of the Land Bank, can you stand up? Okay. Please uh, raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this inquiry? So help you, God. Thank you, Your Honor. The oath has been administered. Thank you. We will now proceed to the to the to, to our next item in the agenda, the continuation of the deliberation. Um, we will first call on the first interpellator. The Honorable Congressman Rog Gutierrez. Yes, you are first to interpolate. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yung mga gusto pong, uh, for a while, uh, Congressman, yung mga gusto pa pong uh, Congressman na magpalista, magpalista lang po, lumapit lang po kay Comsec. Thank you po. Please continue, Congressman Rog. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just have a few questions based on the airs that we've done. And given that this is already our fourth hearing, I'm sure COA... Uh, is uh, very much used to our questioning, and I hope they could indulge us some more. Actually, Mr. Chair, yung aking mga katanungan is supposedly uh, directed to the Special Disbursement Officer of uh, the OVP. Because under my, my understanding, based on the joint memo, this would have been um, SDO Acosta's responsibility. Because under this number 6.3.2, Section B, it is part of the Special Disbursing Officer's responsibility to maintain separate records of all transactions and to retain a certified copy or duplicate copy of the required supporting documents and reports and utilization. However, and my questioning is precisely on this, on the acknowledgement receipts attached as uh, justification, yung uh, documentary evidence presented. However, um, given that the SDO Acosta is not around, I guess we'll be forced to at least to get this, uh, some of the answers, I'll be forced to ask the COA. So with that, Mr. Chair, I'd like to direct my questions perhaps to Attorney Kamora from the ICFAO, if uh, they would be so kind to indulge. Um, just as to add context po, no, uh, Attorney Kamora. We know po that the confidential funds are special in the sense that uh, they respond to, uh, they, they pertain to a certain purpose only allowable under the Joint Memo Circular. But this does not mean that this is a blanket, a blank check po, no? It's not a blanket authority that it could be spent without justification. Would that be a fair statement, Paul? Attorney Kamora, you're recognized. Uh, that is correct, Paul, your, your chair. Mr. So, chair. in line with that and in line with the requirements of the COA, you would ask actually for liquidation reports. Although it's special in the sense that it is directed only to the chairman of the COA, you still have the ICFAO to study this. And in fact, it is the ICFAO who gives the AOMs the notice of disallowance and the uh, notice of credit in relation to confidential fund spending. Is that correct, uh, Mr. Chair? That is correct, Mr. Excellent Chair. Sir. So, Mr. Chair, given the, uh, may we know, I have a timeline again, of the uh, 2022 uh, confidential fund uh, usage of the OVP. If I understand correctly, it was uh, dispersed within 11 days. This was in, for December of 2022, and the basis of the funds was a transfer from the contingent fund. But there was an AOM issued by your office. Anong date po nito? Mr. Chair, the first AOM is dated September 14, 2023. So for the 2022 confidential funds, September 2023, yung AOM. And the response by the uh, Office of the Vice President was received around what time po kaya? Um, it was received by the ICFAO on October 19, 2023, Mr. Chair. October 2023. And uh, one of the findings there was insufficient document, the DEPs po, no? And this would be pertaining to, in support of the liquidation reports, yung ating mga acknowledgement receipts. Because compared to usual spending by government, wherein we actually need official receipts, 
kapag ang pinag-uusapan po ay confidential or intelligence funds because precisely um, confidential dapat yung usage nito, we, it is sufficient to submit acknowledgement receipts. Tama po ba? Uh, Mr. Chair, since the requirement is uh, documentary evidence of payment, not necessarily official receipt. Correct. So we, we, they could submit acknowledgement Attorney receipts. Attorney Kamura, pwede pong pakilakas ang po ninyo yung boses ninyo. Um, uh, documentary evidence of payment po ang required sa joint circular. So, um, the acknowledgement receipts are acceptable po. Acceptable. Correct po, no? and I agree with that. So, the acknowledgement receipts are acceptable. However, one of the findings of the AOM was kulang nga po yung DEPs. And this is pertaining to the acknowledgement receipts. Uh, the first time na nag-liquidate po sila, wala po talagang wala. Uh, submitted na DEPs. Opo. So that's why you had the AOMs in September 2023. Part of the findings was the lack of the DEPs, precisely yung mga ARs natin. And then they answered in October 2023. When they filed in October 2023, was it already there, yung DEPs? Yung justification pa nila? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. It was part of their compliance. So it was submitted October 2023. After that, you, there was a notice of disallowance pertaining to that quarter. Kailan po ito na issue? Uh, Mr. Chair, before that, uh, a notice of suspension was issued. So um, normally, after the AOM is issued and uh, the COA is not satisfied with the compliance, we issue a notice of suspension, uh, which was issued on December 13, 2023. December 2023. And the notice of suspension you mentioned is when the COA is not satisfied. So yung pagsabit po ng October 23, 2023 DEPs, hindi pa po satisfied yung COA. And what was what was the reason that you were not satisfied? Mali-mali po ba yung mga AR or what, kulang pa po yung mga AR? Um, may, mga, uh, may mga ibang ARs po na may uh, issues and may kulang pa po na additional documentation on other ARs. And when, after the notice of suspension for December 2023, they were given another chance to submit additional documents. Is that correct? Or wala na po? Uh, meron pa, Mr. Chair. Pa. Um, they were given 90 days. 90 days. To, when, did um, they, uh, uh, apologies. when did they submit their additional uh, DEPs po? In response to the notice of suspension. Uh, Mr. Chair, we, re we received their compliance on March 13, 2024. <laughs> March 2024. And finally, I suppose after this, ito na po yung uh, disallowance? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Anong date po ng disallowance po natin? Uh, the disallowance is dated August 8, 2024, Mr. Chair. August 2024. Thank you. Um, I'll get back to that po. No? I wanted to establish a timeline because one of the things that we have found with the acknowledgement receipts is that there seemed to be a disconnect in regarding relation to the dates, especially considering the fourth quarter of 2022 CF. Uh, Mr. Chair, may we ask the Secretary, I don't know if they've prepared it. I, I want to flash on screen an acknowledgement receipt. Here. Um, can you, is the date legible po sa inyo? Uh, can you see? I'd like to confirm that the date that it says is actually December 28, 2023. Do you, do you see that, uh, Attorney Kamora? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. And uh, supposedly this was attached. Um, I'm not sure if this would come in for the first batch of response in December 2023 or if it came in with the second batch of response in March 2024. But uh, this is supposedly a DEP presented for the fourth quarter of 2022. Um, isn't it strange? Um, not really strange, it's outright false for it to justify an expense in 2022, but the date is 2023. Would that be correct, Ms. Kamora? Uh, Attorney Kamora? Uh, that is correct, Mr. Chair. Actually, one of the findings under the notice of suspension is that some of the acknowledgement receipts were dated December 2023, and some were even undated. Yes, and this would be the basis for disallowance. Or was this, um, ano po yung, this was the findings of the AOM po, no? Uh, yes, that, that is um, under the notice of suspension na po, Mr. Suspension. Chair. Since na, 
na, nakapag-comply na sila. So, yung observation namin was already under the notice of suspension po. How would it be complied po, Attorney Camora? How do they rectify the AR? If it, I mean, my understanding po is pag submitted po yung AR, this is already supposedly presumed to be regular, and then you have an outright uh, problem such as 2023. Although you might say na typographical error, but correct me if I'm wrong, this happens more than once po. Is that correct, Attorney Camora? Uh, uh, that is correct, Mr. Chair. Would you know how many ARs exactly yung dated 2023, submitted for 2022? Uh, Mr. Chair, we have attached in the, it in the original notice of suspension. However, we do not have the figures today. See you po. Well, just to uh, help you po, no, based on our study, 158 of the acknowledged receipts have that typographical error. We would understand the typographical error if it happens once or twice, and that most for for one individual to make that mistake multiple times. But for supposedly acknowledgement receipts which come from different sources, this should be different people issuing it po, diba? This should, these are different people signing off for different expenses. Now for 158 people to make the same mistake, is that something that would be acceptable? Is that an acceptable margin of error for the COA? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the... Uh, they answered in their compliance. As to the... Um... Mr. Chair, apologies. Maybe, you know, what, is, what does it mean to answer with the compliance? So, they took back yung AR na mali po yung date? Or... Uh, no, Mr. Chair. Yung compliance nila uh, contained their answers why they had um, the uh, acknowledgement receipts dated December 2023 and undated acknowledgement receipts. And what was the answer po, Attorney Camora? Um, they said they have inadvertently contained clerical or typographical errors indicating 2023 instead of 2022. Um, considering the nature of confidential activities which are usually conducted discreetly and completed within a short period of time and in addition to the lack of attention to details of personnel attending to voluminous papers from several individuals, some data in the acknowledgement receipts submitted as proof of transactions may have been missed. Mr. Chair, yeah. I, uh, uh, apologies. I think that uh, portion would suffice for Attorney Camorra. No? So the answer of compliance, they did not uh, dispute, they did not take back the ARs, but they simply gave that defense that uh, it was an inadvertence. Or basically, typo nga po siya. But precisely the point, Mr. Chair, that I think that the committee should consider is that it's a typographical error for 158 acknowledgement receipts. This is not something that I think, uh, although we do not argue with the COA, of course, this is their jurisdiction. Uh, it is uh, precisely their decision if that uh, compliance would be sufficient. However, I think for us to consider in strengthening the laws that we are going to craft in, supports perhaps, in support perhaps of the joint memorandum circular, I think we have to be stricter with the acknowledged receipts to be issued. Because, Mr. Chair, I think, let me, I would like to propose one thing. Of course, the CO will not be able to answer this. But given the timeline, Pono, September 2023, yung first na AOM, the October 2023 was the compliance with the first uh, batch of ARs, and then December 2023, the notice of suspension, and that was the time, Siguro Pono, that they were coming up with these new ARs. It would make more sense, Mr. Chair, for them to make that mistake. Because when you pag nagkaka typographical error po natin sa date, the usual mistake is you put on the date that is current. Isn't it possible, Mr. Chair, based on human experience, isn't it more likely that these ARs were prepared a year after the fact already? That they were prepared in December 2023? Because this precise, precisely coincides with the date in which they submitted the second batch of the ARs. I don't think, Mr. Chair, this was a mistake that was committed in December 2022. This was a mistake that was committed after the fact, after the AOM, and after the notice of suspension, when they were rushing to comply with the yung mga butas po ng COA. I think this is something that the committee should consider. Especially when it comes to the compliance with the COA. We are not faulting the COA, of course, and we respect them. This is their jurisdiction. But one thing that we understand that we see from the COA is that generally, they are uh, not really ministerial, but they never, they would or on the side of caution, 
rather than put themselves in the place to you know exercise discretion regarding the disbursements by any agency. Sa kanila po, as long as complied yung DEP and as long as there's an explanation, they would accept it. However, I think the COA has to go above and beyond that requirement. Because, Mr. Chair, just to highlight also how, um, how spurious this seems and how bogus, if December 2022 po yung date dapat na, ng AR, tapos December 2023 yung date, it, it, it wouldn't even correspond to any confidential funds. Hindi, it's not possible if ever the reasoning was nagkapalitan ng AR, because I understand it might be that might be one of the excuses for inadvertence. Baka nagkapalitan yung AR for December 23 and December 2022. Pero wala pong December 2023. If we recall, the fourth quarter of the confidential funds for the office of the OVP was never dispersed. They chose, although it was already included in the um, our uh, General Appropriations Act, they chose not to disperse yung fourth quarter. So, saan po na ilalagay itong December 2023 AR if, in fact, they would say inadvertence nagkapalitan yan, or if they say typographical error naman, it wouldn't make sense. What's that doing in December 2022? 158 times po nangyari. More likely, this was the same mistake committed by perhaps a few persons, which raises the question, are these acknowledgement receipts spurious? Are they bogus? Are they false? In addition to that, Mr. Chair, I'd like to present another uh, acknowledgement receipt. Um, if the Secretary could please flash yung November 1 po. Kung Rog, ito ko lang linawin, 158 times na ang date ay 2023. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, based on what our office has found, 158 of the ARs corresponding to 23.8 million were submitted for the December, uh, for the fourth quarter of 2022 uh, disbursement but they were citing 2023. Ang sabi nga po ng COA na ang citing the answer of the OVP is that inadvertence po. Ang dami given... namang pagkakamali nun. Kung magkakamali ka, dapat isa lang. E sa 2023, last quarter, wala na silang confidential fund. So parang lumalabas, lumagpas yung kanilang liquidation. Sobra-sobra yung liquidation na nilabas nila. Tama po ba yung pagkakaintindi ko sa sinasabi ninyo? Well, Mr. Chair, your guess is the same as ours, but it could also be na these are ARs belatedly prepared. Ah, okay. Sige po. Thank you po. Please well, proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, uh, proceeding onward, may we ask the uh, Secretary to flash yung November 2020, uh, November 17, 2023 AR. Yun. Thank you. Um, Attorney Kamora, can you, is it legible, Paul? Can you see that the date is November, November 27, sorry, 2022. The 2022. November, uh, I cannot see it. November 17? Uh, November 27, Paul, 2022. Uh, 27. Well, Attorney Kamora, uh, apologies, perhaps di lang kita masyado sa screen, but uh, on paper na po na November 27, 2022 po siya. Um, if my understanding is correct, the AR should uh, correspond to the period of the confidential funds actually dispersed and used. Tama po ba? So although it is for the fourth quarter of 2022, this was submitted as an AR there, it should correspond to the 11 days of disbursement po that they actually had. Because if I understand correctly, anong date nga po yung first uh, yung pag issue nung uh, check for the OVP confidential funds? Um, December 20, 2022, Mr. Chair. December 20, 2022. So definitely, this is after November 27, 2022. Would the COA have, of course, I, of course, I would not fault COA for this. This is supposedly a question for the special dispersing officer, uh, CSDO Acosta, but uh, given that she's not here, I am constrained to ask the COA. Um, para saan po kaya would this be considered? Because if we also consider, baka sabihin naman natin na typographical error, baka dapat November 2023 po ito, wala rin pong fourth quarter confidential funds ang OVP for 2023. Tama po ba? Um, tama po, Mr. Chair. So in that case, how how would the co appreciate uh, this acknowledgement receipt? Uh, normally, Mr. Chair, um, it should be noted that... Uh, Confidential funds should not be used as payment 
for reimbursement of previous activities. So um, it would have been flagged as a reimbursement expense, so not allowed. So this would have been disallowed totally. And perhaps there's, such a, good, there's a good chance that this is part of the disallowance actually of your... Oh. But I think, Mr. Chair, what is striking for this committee is, uh, of course, the COA has already acted on the disallowance. But what should be considered is the, uh, the fact that this could not have happened. I mean, reimbursement might be one explanation. But how could you reimburse something that this was even the first batch of confidential funds? December 21, po ba? Tama ba? December 21? December 20, Mr. Chair. Yung December. date ng check. December 20 po yung check. This is the first confidential funds ever issued to the OVP for this administration. Yet they have acknowledged receipts for November 27, 2022. Ibig sabihin po, wala pa pong confidential funds. They're already coming up with their acknowledgement receipts. So, I Chair, think, with the indulgence of Congressman Riquez, may I just... Congressman Abante. Bago ko makalimutan to, no? Nakalagay dito, yung pakiano nga outit yung, ano, yung uh, acknowledgement receipt yan. Uh, Ito po ba ay allowed ng COA uh, pag gumamit ka ng uh, 150,000 uh, na rewards? Paki ano nga yung acknowledgement receipt? Paki lagay nga uli. Ayan. Allowed po ba ng COA yan? Uh, yung payment of rewards na kalagay medicines? Allowed po ba ng COA yan? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, one, that is one of the observations po. Na so therefore, kung yan ang observation nyo, dinis allow nyo? Yes, Mr. Chair. Part okay, so that was nyo. actually 150,000 used for payment of rewards for medicines. Was this allowed by COA? Ganun po ba? It is, it is one of the disallowed um, accounts, Mr. Chair, yung payment of rewards. Medicines. Ito, ito. Disallowed ito, di ba? Uh, probably, sir, since kasama naman uh, siya tatika, sa... Tatika, ano, attorney, but prob probably. Uh, yes, sir, since it is an acknowledgement <laughs> receipt of payment uh, of rewards. You're, you're a good lawyer. You, can, you cannot just say probably. You, you have to be sure about it, di ba? So, di talagang disallowed ito, di ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. Oh, yan. Mr. Chair, thank you. Please continue, Congressman Roach. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman Bante. Basically, what we're trying to say here, po, no, in relation to the dates, whether this is for reimbursement of, uh, although illegal, po, no, it's not supposed to be allowed. If, whether this was a justification for reimbursement or this was inadvertence or typographical errors, despite being repeated over 158 times, these are clear red flags po, in relation to the AR submitted by the office. And this is something that we should consider. Looking forward, we should consider po, this in aid of legislation, perhaps uh, legislation to strengthen this joint circular to make sure that this doesn't appear again or perhaps stringent penalties for when this is caught. But more important than that, we still have to hold them accountable po, no? For this, although this is already passed, although there's already this notice of disallowance, accountability should be had for this. Now, in addition po, moving forward from these uh, erroneous dates or inadvertent dates, uh, I have another, I would like to present another documentary evidence May we have po, uh, the Secretariat flash yung uh, acknowledged receipt for mi Mr. or Ms. NP. Yun. Um, Attorney Kamora, when we're talking of acknowledgement receipts, basically it's, uh, it's something like this one. It's very bare. It just has the amount received for what purpose and you have the name and the date. That's all that is required. However, when it comes to the name, is this usually the name of the person or signature or both? Um... They, they, they would uh, give us normally yung name and signature, but actually the signature is which is more important Just to more the important. COA. Uh, since we know that unsigned documents are really yes. not um, good documents. So, uh, we, kung signature lang, okay lang po siya. Pero kung name lang po, we will flag it as unsigned document po. Yes. And what is the reasoning for this? Because... A name can be written by anyone, but a signature is supposedly unique. Is, is that a fair statement? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Chair. So what happens when, for example, here, it may not be seen, it's redacted precisely it's because it's confidential. However, it could be noted that this name was written in block letters, which are not distinctive by any manner, yet uh, this was what was submitted as an acknowledgement, uh, acknowledgement receipt. 
So in cases such as this, it's very possible that someone purporting to be Mr. NP is writing the name for NP. Would that be correct, uh, Attorney Camora? Uh, that is correct, Mr. Chair. So in this case, this would be another case of an irregular AR. Would that be correct? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. And of course, when it comes to the ARs that are just block letters and names, because precisely it could be purporting to be that person, but signed by anyone else, this should be disallowed, Mr. Chair. But of course, uh, as mentioned again by Attorney Camora, I don't know if you po kayo with all of these questions for the ICFA, which are all uh, redundant. But it just uh, is an additional uh, proof po that what we're looking at here are red flags when it comes to acknowledgement receipts. And I think we really should strengthen po siguro the DEPs that would be required for confidential funds. Kasi po, hindi po to biro. And if you look at it precisely, we're talking about a single payment for 400,000 pesos as a reward payment, which could be anyone because hindi nga po signed. Kung sa mga signatures nga po, nagkakaduda tayo kung totoo yung signature. Paano pa kaya pag walang signature at all? How do we know that this person exists? These are some issues that we should consider, po, Mr. Chair, when we're going to craft our legislation to strengthen po yung joint memorandum circular. Um, Mr. Chair, I had other questions, but I think this could only be answered by SDO Acosta. So I would like to manifest that I would like to join po yung, uh, sent I, I have the same sentiments as Chairman Abante that uh, these persons invited should appear. At least, it would be our fifth hearing already and still we have no answers and I think it would prepare, it, it, the answers really rely on their attendance. And uh, this is only for the accountability, for the truth that our people would see. So I think we should really uh, be a, have a harder stance for requiring their attendance. So with that, uh, Mr. Chair, I would uh, now defer and uh, yield to our other colleagues here today. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Koa. Thank you, Congressman Rodriguez. The next interpolator is uh, Congresswoman Pami Zamora. Mr. Chair, uh Good afternoon, everyone. Mr. Chair, since wala naman yung mga invited guests natin sa, from the OVP, um, I will not be uh, raising any questions. Rather, I would just like to point out an, a very important manifestation, which I believe is very important and vital for our proceedings. No? Kaunting ka, uh, backtrack lang po tayo. Over the past hearings, Mr. Chair, we've discussed the contents of the accomplishment reports and I'm sure we all have copies of that at kung sino ang naghahanda at pumipirma ng mga ito. And as we have confirmed, ang naghahanda at pumipirma ng mga ito ay yung SDO and yung head ng agency. Mr. Chair, allow me to point out um, what the certification attached to the accomplishment report means for the SDO and the Vice President herself as head of the agency. Um, meron ba yung slide natin para makita ng ating uh, mga manonood? So, uh, Mr. Chair, itong pinapakita natin ay part ng certification na naka-attach sa mga liquidation reports na OV na sinasubmit mismo ng SDO at ng ating Vice President. Okay? We have four copies um, from the period of December 21 to 31, 2022. From Feb, 20, from Feb 6 to March 29, 2023. From April 25 to June 2023. And from July 14 to September 14, 2023 all of which amount to 125 million. So, apat na 125 million po ito na sinocertify po nila, nakapirma po silang dalawa dyan. And may I emphasize on Section B. Expenses were incurred in connection with the agency's intelligence and or confidential operations and activities with supporting documents attached to the liquidation of confidential funds and for the intelligence funds, documentary evidence of payment kept in sealed envelope in the vault in the office of the SDO. 
this only means, Mr. Chair, that the signatories of these uh, liquidation or accomplishment reports, which is a sworn document, certify na yung cash advances here amounting to 500 million pesos representing the confidential funds were used for the implementation of the OVP initiatives and as COA has pointed out in the past hearings, they do not verify or determine whether the information in the DEPs the amount, the signature, name in the receipt, the dates of receipt, are truths, lies, or are reasonable or unreasonable. The only persons who are able to verify kung totoo talaga ang mga acknowledgement receipts na ito, Mr. Chair, ay ang office of the vice president particularly the head of the vice or the head of the office which is the vice president herself and the special disbursing officer with this mr chair um, it's rather very evident that through the certification attached to this nakikita natin dito accomplishment reports the ars uh, na kino-question kanina are impliedly verified by the Vice President herself and the SDO. Nevertheless, Mr. Chair, naniniwala po ang inyong lingkod na mahalaga na usisain pa rin natin at tingnan ang veracity ng mga acknowledgement receipts na pinresinta nila and at the end of the day na kahit ito po ay, ay confidential or intelligence funds man, Ito ay pondo pa rin po ng ating pamahalaan intended for para sa ating mga kababayan. With this, Mr. Chair, I yield the floor to the next interpolator.